In Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 35, the commendable story of the man called the Good Samaritan is told. A man traveling had fallen victim to thieves who attacked and wounded him, stole from him, and left him half dead. A priest, as well as a Levite, happened on him where he lay, but did nothing to help him. Contrary to what one would have expected of people schooled in the principles and practice of the love of God. But a certain Samaritan, we are told in verse 33, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. I want you to notice that the Samaritan did not just feel compassion, he went further and also showed compassion. How did he do this? In verse 34, we are told, He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. His act of compassion was not in feelings and in words only. He demonstrated his compassion by practical deeds. In verse 35, we are told, and on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. What an interesting man, this Samaritan. What a sacrifice and what a cost. The subject of my discussion with you today derives from the question Jesus asked his audience following his narrative about this good Samaritan. In Luke chapter 10, verse 36, Jesus asked, Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Was it the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Who, in this scenario, was on a genuine errand for the master? I'm speaking to you today about the front line of ministry. The story is told of a highly skilled medical practitioner who was also a devout Christian. One of his patients was a lady who, although professing to be a Christian, was frequently troubled by imaginary diseases. The good doctor was frequently called in until at last he said to her, Madam, I will give you a prescription which I am certain will make a healthy woman of you, if you will follow it. When the prescription arrived, it was simply a piece of advice from the doctor, which read, Do good to somebody. The woman obeyed the advice. She roused herself to relieve a poor neighbor, and then sought out others who needed her help. In a very short time, this Christian woman, who had been so constantly despondent and nervous, became a healthy, cheerful woman. Why? She now had a good purpose to live for. She found joy in doing good to others, an important lesson we can benefit from even today. No wonder we are told in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that Jesus Christ went about doing good, having been anointed by God with the Holy Ghost, and with power. Have you ever thought of it this way, that the whole purpose of the anointing Christ received was in order for him to do good? No more, no less. The anointing upon his life was not so that he could become a celebrity crowd puller. It was not so that he could capitalize on it to amass a fortune as many would have done today. Nor was it supposed to be used to establish a name and a monument for himself. No. The reason God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power was so he could go from place to place doing good deeds. God still expects the same of us today. It is not enough for us to just feel compassion for those around us. We are to go a step further and actually demonstrate God's love to them. What qualifies us to be ambassadors of good deeds is not a title or a position 
but an understanding of the privilege we have to be God's hands and feet. None of us has an excuse not to be like the Samaritan. Do you realize you are more qualified than your pastor to speak to your work colleague or your friend about the sacrifice Christ made for them? You are also in the best position to demonstrate and show those closest to you the meaning of the love of God. The truth is that our understanding of what and where the front line of ministry is needs revisiting. We need to accept that the nature of the pulpit ministry has changed. Right where you are is your pulpit, and the life you live is the epistle others are eager to read. The office where you work is your front line. Your dental office, your law office, the classroom where you teach, the library, the cafeteria, everywhere you are and every task you do is a potential front line for a good deed and service. Whatever opportunity presents itself for you to demonstrate the gospel of Christ in action through ministry, seize it and use it well. We are not told what his occupation was, but this good Samaritan man must have been a professional. I think he was a medical doctor, but perhaps he was an officer of the law, or could he have been a lawyer or businessman? It doesn't matter. One thing we can surmise from the account before us is that he was a busy man. Like many of us today, he must have had several appointments scheduled in his diary and perhaps several targets and deadlines to meet at the other end of his journey. Yet, he allowed himself time to show kindness and love to someone else, someone else in serious need. This man was neither a priest nor a Levite. He was neither a pastor nor a bishop. He was just a God-fearing person like you and I claim to be. Did you know that the Bible had you specifically in mind when in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, saints, on the wall by the exit gate of a haulage company was a sign for all the drivers to see as they drove off. This sign read, Beyond these gates, you, are the company. A fact that is also true of us Christians. Beyond the walls of our churches and denominations, we are a personal representative and reflection of Christ and of his gospel message. The question I hope to leave with you is this. How well are you excelling in this task of going about and doing good, just like our master? And how well are you utilizing every opportunity you have as a front line for ministry? Think upon these things. My name is Biyi Ajala, and I thank you for watching and for partnering with me in this task of making ready a people prepared for the second coming of the Lord. Thank you. God bless you.